Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell Podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course. Pleased to be joined once again by Parker Kligerman, of course, the driver of the number 48 Chevrolet for Big Machine Racing in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Hi, Parker. Hey, buddy. Thanks for having me on. I feel like this is becoming a monthly occurrence. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I love working with Big Machine. We had Patrick on, too. So um, uh, I saw it. He did great. I listened to it. He was. Uh, you did well as, as well, of course. But he... Uh, yeah, I uh, I didn't know if he you know had the um, I guess the TV chops within him, but he's he's got it. So you know he's got the flair and the it factor, and uh, it's good to see where where he can be a, a TV duo. Yeah, uh, speaking of television, uh, you're going to be doing some TV this weekend. Of course, you'll uh, you'll be at the Rolex Twenty Four at Daytona. Um, um, but first off, we'll get we'll get to that in a minute. But first off, just kind of talk about how things are kind of going uh, since we last talked to you in November about. Uh, just preparations for overall for the season. So that was November when we last talked, man. It felt like yesterday. Um, so yeah, we've just been continuing the preparation and what that means. I know a lot of fans hear that and they're like, what the hell does that mean? Well, what it means is, you know, there's just a lot of things and stuff and minutia you have to go through uh, in the off season. And for the team in particular, right. It's building cars and, trying to get ahead of when you need cars and having them through the system as we work through at RCR to have them best prepared for each and every race, you know, as we go into the season. And that starts back in November, right? My team has been doing an awesome job of getting cars ready for those first five, six, seven races and sort of planning that out. But you've got to plan 33 races, right? So it's uh, it's something that starts months in advance. We are really in a good spot. Patrick's kept me updated on that, and the, the, all the guys have done a great job. I've gone down there numerous times uh, through December and January this month because um, I'm not quite down there full time yet. But um, and you know, mostly off, most often when I'm down there, we make sure to do a simulator session of some sort. I've done uh, some other simulator sessions as well, working with um, some of the you know RCR team, and so I think. You know, for me on that side of the preparation, that's been the key. It's the simulator, right? That's what we use these this day and age. We don't go testing, although we have one coming up. We just don't we don't get to go testing. We don't get to drive the car. So you've got to replace that with something in that simulator. I've mixed in, you know, personally, I racing. So I have some tracks and specific things I want to work on um in this off season. So I've been using iRacing to do that and then backing it up with the simulator. I've been working through redesigning my note system and how I, you know basically take in all the information I'm getting in this off season time and from the simulator so that I can hopefully apply it on the race weekends. And that sounds very boring, but it's, it's actually kind of fun because it's cool stuff to see uh, as you progress through the time of, you know, simulator to real car to the races. And you can see sort of how like you as a, as a driver progress and understand the cars, understand what you're feeling, that sort of thing. So that's all part of the process. Um, and, you know, the simulator lastly, does something for us that you just can't replace without time. And that is myself and Patrick and our engineer, Cody working together. And I know you hear that often, but it's, it's really true because we're just humans, right? We're, we're humans trying to make this piece of metal go fast and everyone's different and everyone talks about these things different. And so you just got to learn that language amongst each other of how you think about going racing and how you apply that, how you describe it, all those things. So that's what we're going through right now, um, and we're going to get the first chance to show it this coming Monday in that test that we have at Charlotte. Um, and then, you know, another thing from that that's huge is that the next day, the next morning, we're going to be in the simulator verifying all the things we've been working on on the simulator. So it's like uh, I like to say it's correlating. It's basically for me correlating what I feel there, what I see. And then applying it in the real car and then backing that up with doing it again on sim. So that's that's the process. That's the workflow for us. Um, and it all leads to Daytona where we kick it off and then we start going week to week to week. Yeah, for sure. It's it's going to be a fun season. By the way, I know we talked about Chicago the last time you were on here. They just announced the, the music lineup for that. The Chainsmokers, Miranda Lambert, the Black Crows, and Charlie Crockett will all be in <laughs> Chicago. So that's going to be exciting. I'm a big that's awesome. I'm a big chain smokers fan. So I got to see them in Vegas uh, last year, uh, which was a lot of fun. And I just think they have great music and that's really cool to see. And I think that's the intention of that event, right? It's going to be a festival. It's going to be a festival of speed. 
on July 4th in Ch- the heart of Chicago. What a cool you know event, Americana feel. Um, you know, if you if you've been to street course events, you know, whether it's Long Beach or even Monaco or Miami, come give this a chance because I honestly believe this will be one of the coolest experiences uh in all of motorsports. And I uh, I can't wait to see all of this because I think it's just going to be a huge success. It's going to propel NASCAR into a, a whole other stratosphere. But the other thing is I love street course racing, and I desperately want to win that street course. So we are going uh, all out in trying to go after that victory. Yeah. And you mentioned about the test. Um, um, what it Just kind of explain to people that might not know what, what exactly uh, um, the, some of the changes – with the Xfinity car. And I know Patrick kind of talked about it when we had him on, but just kind of explain um, to many people for the casual viewer, what's changing. Yeah. So it's super simple. Um, essentially you've seen these cars over the last, what, 10, 15 years where we crab down the straightaways, meaning you see the right rear tail to the right and you see the front of the car pointed to the left towards the infield yeah. that's called skew. And that allows us to have a lot more side force. Side force is exactly like downforce, but it's on the side of the car. So the car can skew, be more yawed out in the corners, which allows you to take the corner faster, so on and so forth, leads to a faster lap time. Basically, what's happening is NASCAR has made some rule changes to take away that crabbing down the straightaway and that skew. And so what it does, it makes the car far more straight up. And so for us, we've got to then adjust our setups how we approach, you know, setting up the cars, figuring out what that feel is like, because you've basically just taken away a cushion of air that we relied on for the last couple of years in these cars, and now we don't have it. So it's not an easy process of just being like, oh, we'll just, uh, you know, skew it even more, tow out the rear end. It, it doesn't work that way, right? We're within a box of the NASCAR rules. So you will notice the cars will be far more straight up going down the straightaway. Um, and it's our job to figure out how to make them go faster than that box now. And that's what the test is for. Well, um, of course, we also, you're also, before you go testing, uh, you're going to have some, uh, you're going to be on television, of course, Rolex uh, 24 this weekend on the networks of NBC. Um, uh, you're going to be down there. And it, oh, 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 if you saw qualifying, oh, it, it was fun. Tom Glunkquist laid down a lap uh, in the GTP class. Um, what What's the, what is this race going to be like this year uh, with the new GTP class and all that stuff? Well, I don't think it's going to be vastly different than anything we've seen in years past. You know, this race since its inception, what, in the 1960s, has been a stalwart of the endurance world. It's it's 24 hours in a very unique place, which is the mix of banking, high speeds, and then a very tight infield. And that means that what it takes to win doesn't change, right? You've got to go fast, do it consistently over 24 hours, avoid all the traffic, and ho- hopefully be the first across the finish line, right? And that that formula doesn't change no matter what's being raced. Now, the cool thing about this year, as you mentioned, is the the GTP cars, which is essentially top level uh prototype cars that are using the the name GTP which was very big in the 80s and the 90s. Um and essentially what they are is hybrid uh prototypes. And so they're all using a spec hybrid system that's then mated to either whatever engine that manufacturers decide to use. BMW has a V8 Acura's got a V6, Porsche's got a V8, um, BMW has a V8, Cadillac, I mean, has a V8, sorry. So, you know, there, there's different, and they're all different designs and different ways, you know, those engines are designed. So you're mating that hybrid system to those engines. Um, and so the cars are just highly technologically advanced. Um, you know, these are probably the most technologically advanced prototype endurance racing cars we've had in America since pro- um, probably the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, the LMP1 era. So this is a huge jump um, for the for the series into that highly, you know, highly advanced technology. Um, and so there's nine of those cars that will be vying for overall victory if all goes well. You have LMP2, which are a little bit slowed down prototypes, LMP3 out there, which is more of an amateur prototype category. And then you have the GTD categories of GTD Pro and GTD Regular and – there's 33 of those. And that is your Porsches, Ferraris, Cor- you know, Corvettes, so on and so forth. Um, road cars essentially, you know, look like the road cars that are so closely matched. It's just unbelievable. And last year at the end of the race, you had two Porsche 911s that literally got in a knockdown drag out bar fight for the last hour of the race. That was yeah. epic. Um, 
and they, you know, it was just one of the coolest finishes I've seen after 24 hours. So this, I think you also have, you also have 61 cars. I should mention that, uh, which is an insane amount of cars on this racetrack. So traffic will be insane. Um, the GTP cars are incredibly fast on the straightaways. Uh, you have that mix of them trying to work their way through GT traffic and the other prototype classes. So it is going to be, in my opinion, one of the more interesting 24 hour races we've seen in the last two decades at Daytona. Um, and you can watch it all on NBC, USA and Peacock, of course, which I will be on the broadcast for, especially in the late night hours. And I think with the, with the GTP class, the big thing for them though, as I talk about all that technology is that even if you gave these teams four years to work on this technology and the manufacturers until you go out and race it, you just don't know. And that's where those teams are right now. They just don't know what breaks, what's going to last, what the pitfalls can be. And so we are all going to find out together over the course of 24 hours, who has figured out that formula the best or who can simply make those cars survive uh, to the end. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be insane. Is there a favorite with this top class? Because for, from everyone that I've talked to, this is probably the most unpredictable class out of the five. Yeah. I mean, I think Porsche, in my opinion, would have been the favorite going in because they just had the most time to prepare. They, they, they announced their program the earliest, I want to say almost two years ago uh, with Penske. And so they've definitely been developing this, but, you know, they've been in the same boat as the other manufacturers in terms of trying to do 24 hour tests. I believe there's not a single GTP car that has run a full 24 hours without issues in testing. So <laughs> this is, you know, this is, uh, this is uncharted territory. Um, and because of that, you know, the actors though showed up and were very, have been very fast leading all the practices, winning the poll. Um, but I don't know if this is a race where speed wins you it, you know, wins it right. It's, it's going to be the, finding the pace to make the car last and maybe a bit of fingers crossed that you, you know, the parts that they don't even understand yet last. So yes, it's unpredictable because there's just no data to back up a significant, uh, you know, advantage to any one manufacturer team. Yeah. Uh, last thing, um, uh, your truck schedule, where, where are we going to see you, uh, first off? So uh, it's always fluid with our with the Henderson Motorsports team, as you know. Um, we like to keep it that way. We like to keep it relaxed. If we don't want to go to a race that we and you know if we put a race on the calendar, we don't think we can win. We don't go to it. So <laughs> that's the best way to decide how we go racing. Um, so with that, we will be at Daytona. Vegas has been a little bit up in the air uh, as if we were going to do it or not. We'll definitely be at Martinsville, uh, Bristol Dirt. North Wilkesboro for sure. Um, where else are we going? This is this is you're pushing my knowledge of where of the schedule at this point. Can't yeah. remember past that, or even if I missed one or two in the middle there. But yeah, our our schedule is always variable with that. We you know just try to find places that either we are going there straight up because we think we can win, or for whatever reason there's another reason that we want to go in terms of you know it's going to help us later on at a different track or that sort of thing. So. Uh, our intention though, to do the same 10 to 12 races we've done the last couple of years. Um, and you know, I, I love that family. I love that race team, Chris Carrier, everyone involved with that team. It's just, it's for me, I always have said this it, when I go to the track with them, it's a vacation, um, because it's just fun and the whole race team is so awesome. And I'd like to go out there and, and do something we haven't done, which is, win multiple races in a year. So that's our goal this year. We've, we've won single races in a year. This time we're going to go win multiple. Yeah. Uh, is it going to suck missing in Ohio? Uh, yeah, I mean, but you know, for me, I got the trophy. So <laughs> I hate it. You know, I hate to not be able to drive the 75 truck there. Cause I love racing that truck. I love driving that road course truck. We have that's, uh, this same road course truck we've had for like six years, five years, whatever it is. Uh, and it's, it's actually, I think it's like 11 or 12 years old, but I, I love driving that thing. I love driving stock cars on road courses. So I, you know, in that case, I am disappointed, but Hey, look, we got the trophy. We got the check. Um, I can hope, uh, you know, we'll maybe have a surprise in what we do with that situation, but, um, you know, I'm just thankful to have had the chance and to have gotten that trophy. And now we can go work on winning other races. All right. Well, Parker Kuggerman, thank you so much for coming on and talking with us and uh, best of luck uh, 
Best uh, have fun at the Rolex 24 and uh, best of luck at the test at Charlotte on Monday. Thank you, Casey. Appreciate it. Looking forward to it. And uh, thanks for having me on again. Look forward to doing this again in the future.